Deutsche Männer und Frauen, Soldaten der deutschen Wehrmacht. Unser Führer Adolf Hitler ist gefallen. My name is Paulus Schmidt. I am the co-director of Backfire. I've done numerous short films here in Corpus Christi, Texas, and Backfire was probably the hardest. I'm Michael Corey, co-director of Backfire with Pablo Schmidt. So we decided to see if we could pull off a World War II era film on no budget. We wanted to create a World War II story. I'd read up a lot on Operation Paperclip and how the, the U.S. brought over many Nazi scientists to work for the U.S. government. And I thought it'd be a great idea to kind of incorporate that concept into Backfire and kind of tie it all up with Area 51. One of the biggest challenges of trying to pull together a World War II film on no budget was securing locations that would hold up to the era. And in Corpus Christi, if anyone's ever been here, the USS Lexington was our number one pick. Uh, films like Pearl Harbor have been shot uh, on the USS Lexington. So we knew if we could get the Lexington as one of our locations, that would set our film to a whole new level. Now what Charlie said, ever go. Helm, right full rudder, steady on course, 135 degrees. Yeah. Ronnie, you wait to say Jim until he's done saying Admiral. Okay. Okay. We called up the Lexington, got a hold of a woman named Debbie Kreitz, and she was kind enough to let us go take a look at the ship, and gave us free reign to film and pretty much wherever we needed, which really was amazing. We shot all night there after hours. Jim, we've just been authorized to execute Operation Backfire. Backfire was entirely shot with Canon T2Is and these old Canon FD lenses, uh, 50 and 85, 24, 35. Costuming was another big challenge, but luckily on the Lexington, the historian Cecil had a bunch of different uniforms that were authentic from World War II uh, that our actors got to go in, try on. It was just like a prop house, a, a wardrobe house. And, and to him, it was his job as a historian. But to us, it was a filmmaker's dream to be able to go through all this stuff and decide what our actors could wear. I think everybody had a really good time. The Lexington was a really fun uh, day of shooting. A lot of preparation went into uh, acquiring all the uh, Nazi insignias for our two Nazi characters, uh, Olgu's character and Sal's character. Uh, I spent some time uh, researching uh, different websites and uh, uniforms and so forth and finally was able to acquire all these insignias online to be able to complete their uniforms. It was tough just myself and Pablo being the whole crew uh, on the film. We were both camera operators, we were the directors, we were the sound guys, we were the grips, the everything. We, we did every job you could. It would have been nice for some help, but we really enjoyed being able to work together and work off of each other. We each, you know, assigned each other, okay, you direct this part, I'll direct this part. But in the end, we were both all over the place and directing at the same time. I guess we, we were able to complement each other and come up with good ideas of how to shoot things. I happen to know Ray Pena that owns a 1929 Model A Ford. He helped me out on a previous film, so we gave him a call and seen if he could come out and just use his car for one quick scene. So we shot the car driving in the daytime and we needed to make it look night or morning. So Pablo went in with some visual effects and darkened everything, added some headlights, and I think he did a really good job. The Grotkow Airfield indoor shots were all shot at the Ritz. It's an old theater here in Corpus Christi. It was built in 1929 and is currently undergoing restoration. Monica Sawyer, uh, she heads Patch. It's an organization that's trying to restore it to its original condition. And she was nice enough to let us shoot all our indoor scenes there. Shooting inside the Ritz also had its challenges. For one, the room that we were shooting in was completely empty. There was nothing in there. So Michael and I had to acquire a lot of props to be able to fill up the place and look at, make it look like as though uh, there is some activity going on inside. Without extras, your scenes are gonna seem flat and dull and very low budget. So take a look at these extras here. Check out this guy, this one, this one, this one, and if you look close, 
You'll notice it's all the same person. That's AJ Knight. We multiplied him five times in the film. We even had to do the same with Steve Kuhn, Pablo, and myself. Multiplied ourselves in all different scenes. All you gotta do is change costumes, turn your back to the camera, and voila, you have a scene that comes to life. The problem we had with shooting out at Cabinus Field was that the hangars are abandoned. They've been abandoned for a long time now. When it came down to editing, uh, I would have to add uh, planes and V2 rockets and Nazi flags and, and so forth to make the uh, hangars look alive, as though there is some activity going on. Our last scene takes place at the Galvan House. It's an old house out at Heritage Park in Corpus Christi. Uh, so the hard part about this shot was having to decorate the inside of the house. So we had to bring a lot of our own props. So, uh, you know, we got a flag from the house actually. There's some bags in there that are just stuffed with uh, teddy bears and, and foam and so forth. And uh, the globe. Uh, the old file cabinet, we have an old typewriter on the table. And it took us about an hour and a half to almost two hours just to decorate the scene and kind of get it to how we wanted. From the moment we finished shooting Lexington to our next day of production, there was a gap. There was maybe a two week gap. So I figured, okay, I'm gonna start writing some music for uh, Backfire. So I put the scene in and I watched it and I knew I wanted something uh, military, but at the same time kind of a little on the mystery side, a little bit on the heroic, on the epic. I was watching the edit that Michael had done of the Lexington scene and I just started singing the melody. And it actually worked with both the Lexington scene and our last scene. What's going to happen to all of this scientific knowledge? That is not your concern. It'll be in good hands. Thank you again for your service. Sir, 